Oh, it's Rick Taylor. Yo, what it do? I'm Genesis Renji. You watching me live on Rap Draft. Shout out to homie Rick Taylor, man. Yo, 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 what's going on, man? It's your boy Rick Taylor back with another episode of the Rap Draft. I got my dog Genesis Renji here with me, man. What's going on? Oh, yeah, yeah. What's popping, bro? Another cold ass day in Milwaukee, but we're here. Right. Man, nothing much, man. Here on the Rap Drive, we like to interview artists of all kinds, whether you're a music artist, producer, painter, whatever art you do, or you're an entrepreneur, this is the platform for you. My dog. So, um, we pretty much like to let the fans know, or the people who don't know you, know more about you and That's what so. you do in a day of life, you know? So, with that being said, my first question for you is, where was you born and raised? I was born in Bethesda, Maryland. Um, grew up in Maryland for about eight, nine years, and then... Milwaukee from 10 to now, I've just been in and out. But Milwaukee's, Milwaukee's home. Milwaukee's where I was brought up and became who I am. So, right. Yes, sir. That's what's up, man. Now, um, growing up, like even in like Milwaukee and in Maryland, like what was your childhood like? Um, Very different. Very, very different. Uh, my Maryland childhood, because I'm a military kid, so I was, you know, brought up a little, a little more strict. Um, but living in Maryland, military bases, and then just different suburban areas. I'm a suburban kid, regardless of what people think or say. Mm. Um, it's just calmer, softer, quieter, easier, a little more fun life. But moving to Milwaukee at um, like nine or 10, we would visit because this is where my mom's family is at. But moving here was a culture shock for me, like being in the classrooms and seeing how people interact with their family, interact with people, interact with each other. And I was like, oh, this is, Different, and it took a lot of adjusting to. Um, yeah, I, yeah. My my cousin really helped me uh, adopt and uh, assimilate to the to the area because it was crazy, bro. Without my cousin Beer, I probably would. I definitely wouldn't be a rapper, but I for sure wouldn't have made it through Milwaukee. <laughs> like, right. yeah, it could be pretty dangerous. Mm -hmm. man, you know? um, people don't know. Now, um, for the people who want to know, who is Genesis? Renji, like we know you as the artist, but who is you as the person? I'm the GOAT. <laughs> I'm the GOAT either way. Um, no, nah, I'm, as a as an artist, I'm dumb confident. I mean, the artist and the person, damn, they're going hand in hand, honestly. I still, you don't get the same me. The difference, I think the main difference is just being how much I give um, on a more personal level. Uh, me outside of music, I can be very introspective. Um, I know most people say I come off as an asshole when they first meet me, which is cool, but it's also like, I ain't that much of an asshole in my right. personal life either. But, um, I don't know, bro. I'm the, I'm the, I, t I tell people like all the time, the nigga you see on the internet is the nigga you get in real life. So it's the same thing even with the music thing. Like, I'm me completely. Yeah, yeah that, that's about it, bro. I'm the, the heartbroken, egotistical, uh, Rap nigga just trying to make it like everybody else. Right. You seem like an interesting person, bro, from when I seen your videos and then from me meeting you. I'm like, yeah, he just seemed like an interesting person. You seem cool. like. Oh, yeah. I definitely am. I can be. I just, I'm a Gemini, bro, so yeah, <laughs> it, de okay. it depends on the mood. Yeah. That's all it is. Right. Some of my closest homies, when they met me, they was like, yeah, bro, when we first met, they were like, either I ain't like you or I thought you ain't like me. And I'm like, no, nah, bro, usually in them first interactions, I like to sit back and just learn people. I just want to see who they are, how they adapt to a room and then that let me know how much of them I can really give or what I'm gonna approach and shit. Right, right. Oh, yeah. Um now what or who inspired you to get into music like my cousin Pierre. Uh he's the reason I got into music because I wanted to impress him. You know what I'm saying? Like like I was saying earlier, he's the reason I um was able to survive Milwaukee, you know what I'm saying? Adapt and assimilate to it. But um we weren't allowed to listen to music growing up in my house, but whenever we went to my cousin Pierre's house he was playing rap, sneaking, you know, we playing Grand Theft Auto, all the shit we weren't allowed to do at home. Right. And we would freestyle a lot, and that was, I was I just always wanted to impress him. So I was just rapping to get better for him, and then that in turn became, well, I like, I love music already, you know, just loving music. Maybe I can create it a little bit more. And then um, getting into poetry and eventually recording music as a kid, and then that carrying on through high school and then college, so eventually it becomes a career for me. Mm -hmm. That's dope. Um, 
Let's let's go back for a minute. You yeah. said your parents was in the service, yeah, and it was pretty strict. They was pretty strict on y'all, like growing up. Like, yeah. what was that like? Like growing up in ours, you couldn't really do nothing. I ain't gonna say couldn't do nothing because <laughs> we. I had a great childhood. Okay. Like, I, I give I give my parents props for that all the time. I had a great childhood. Um, they both did their damn thing. It's um, knowing the differences between how you grow up versus your peers and your friends, how they grew up. Like, uh, we didn't. My mom didn't want us watching Power Rangers because they had guns. So, uh, we didn't play with Pokemon or Digimon and like that because she was like, nah, you know, all black women, them demonic monster things, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Harry Potter, no witchcraft, no shit like that, right? Um, my dad was a little more lenient, like he let us do a, li- a, a couple things more, but the rap shit was like a hard, a hard no. You know, we, we came up listening to jazz, uh, Radio Disney was a big one in the crib, little pop music, and then, you know, a lot of soul music or uh, Anita Baker, Stevie, um, Temptations, you know, the the, yeah, the yeah. typical thing. Right. So the difference, I mean, the difference really was um, just how we interact with each other because me and my brothers are super tight and then how we interact with other people too. It's like we see things in a different way that most people don't see just because of the upbringing. You know mm-hmm. Now, um, in your genre of music, some people might consider you as like a, a backpack rapper or something like that. How do you feel about people saying stuff like that? You know what's funny? The, uh, the like the, the common thing I've gotten through my career is, um, is usually from like older people, but they always say I'm a rapper's rapper. And I find it funny because it's like, when you think of a rapper's rapper, you think of their top five, and my top five is never a rapper's rapper's top five. But um, I don't mind it, man. I, was, I don't mind where people place me musically just don't put me in country because i don't make that at all right. but i can i can see why you i can see why people would say backpack rap i've had the era of that so that lingers in me my biggest influence is um lupe fiasco like in like embedded in my musical dna is it's lupe kanye uh wayne and eminem and then drake like they make me up as an artist at my core that's and dope then, yeah everything else on top of that because um, you know, your influences change as you change as a person. Yeah. So I've got eras of people who influence me more than those. But at the core of it all, I mean, most of my makeup is backpack rap because I'm a fan of words. I, I love putting shit together and mm-hmm. making it do things that you didn't think could happen. You know, it's crazy because like for you to just say that, like those top five, I mean, those five, mm-hmm. I was going to ask you next, like, what was, who, is, who are your top my five? My top five differs because my criteria isn't the same as everybody else's, right? I'm an artist, so I look at it from an artist's perspective. So to me, sales matter. Like, people don't care about the sales. I'm like, but that matters. You can always find a nigga that raps better than you, but that don't mean that motherfucker can make music. Right. Most battle rappers are some of the greatest lyricists we don't ever come across. They can't make music to save their life. <laughs> it's not... It's not they fault, but that's just, you know, that's just what they're better at. Um, my top five, and that shit, that shit changes depending on the, the era we in too, but the five for me is usually, um, it's Hove, Eminem, Wayne, Kanye, and then that fifth spot, it always changes depending on what we're talking about. If we're talking about just a rapper, an overall rapper, I'm going to put, um, it swaps between Drake and Kendrick, depending on who drops that year. Yeah. And then if we're talking in terms of just like lyricism, the ability of rapping, like the skill set of it, then it goes M, Hove, uh, Lupe, Nas, and then that, and then Wayne. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Those are the best rappers to me. You know what I'm right. saying? So. And that's dope because, um, like you said, like it depends on what you're talking about, mm-hmm. and you go off other things. Like, I I have a top five, but I can't really name them. But I know, like, because I got more than the top five. Right? Yeah. But and that's the thing too; it's so hard to just pin them down to yeah. five, bro. Because it's like, right? There were times where that nigga wasn't at his best. You know what I'm saying? So there was somebody, there was right. somebody else better at that time. So it's it's, it's really difficult. Um, I think the closest we didn't got is when people say these are the top. For that this time period of this era, and I'd be like, oh, okay, that makes more sense. That's fire. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. And then I got my my top five favorites, and that changes day on day too. But the top five favorite is always different from the top.
top five ever. You know yeah, what I'm saying? and that's crazy. Like I said, when I'm when I'm labeling my like top five, top ten, or whatever, I go by different things too, like mm -hmm. sales, the way you move, the type mm -hmm. of person you are. I go by a lot of things that people like. They just go by like the lyricism and stuff like that. I go by everything. So music. Yeah. So when people ask me top five rapper, I'm not thinking just music. I'm thinking everything it takes to be a rapper, like what encompasses the entire thing, from sales to longevity to impact, influence, marketing. Um, the shit you do outside of rap that happened because of rap, like you know, and that because for me that's that's where I'm aiming. Like that's my trajectory. That's mm -hmm. that's my target. So I'm not gonna just base myself on just lyricism. So I gotta hold the people that I'm looking at studying to the same standard that I'm holding myself, which is, hey, bro, what's the influence we having? How great is your marketing? How dope is the music you making outside of just rapping? It, does this shit have replay value? You know what I'm saying? Do people bring you up outside of music? What are you doing outside of music that people learn new of you for music and now we learn everything else you do outside of that? And then or vice versa. Like what's something we learned about you outside of music and then found out you do music and it was, oh shit, that's dope too. Right. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> do you feel like your genre, like well just like let's just say backpack rappers? If people call backpack rappers who be lyricists and doing stuff like that, do you feel like you guys get that respect? Like when it comes to like in a city of Milwaukee, do y'all feel like y'all get that respect versus like the other, like you know the trap and slap music and stuff like that? Um, I say I do. Mm -hmm. Speaking for me personally, I say I do because I make it a, I make it like a mission for me to get that respect. Like you got to know, but also being in the city, we know that. And I've, this is something I've spoken about all the time, but we know our imitates life, right? Milwaukee's the most segregated city in the country, and that reflects not only in the people, but in the art, too. So we can jump immediately and say um, the city is segregated by, you know, the white artists and the black artists. But then it gets deeper than that, too, because if we focus on just black music, that's also segregated to where we got the jack, slap, trap, whatever you want to call it, north side rap. And then you got where everybody else says backpack rappers, weirdos, other niggas, whatever, even that segregation is there too. So I think the views differ because we in different circles. Some of us overlap and they do it well, you know what I'm saying? But then it, it's just um, just difference in environment, really. And that comes up with how you brought up. But I think um, for the backpackers, just to go back to the original question, I think we I think we get our respect. The ones who deserve it get it. Yeah. The ones who work for it get it. I mean, the ones who don't get it or feel like they don't get it, they just haven't put themselves in that position to make it known. Like I'm, I bring up Ali all the time. Like Ali, people don't call Ali the greatest because he was the greatest boxer. Granted, he is, but they called him the greatest because he told him he was the greatest. Man. Like Drake said, I was the greatest. So. I'm the greatest. I said that before, you know, I knew it before I said I was or whatever the fuck, however the fuck the line go. That's what it is. I tell people, hey, I'm the GOAT, point blank, period. It don't matter what I'm doing. Whether I'm talking about rapping, I'm talking about a book I just wrote, or I'm just poetry, whatever it is, I'm the greatest at what I do because that's how I feel and that's the work I put into that shit. Right. And you going to dress me as such because that's all I come down to. Right. Yeah, but yeah, but I think the respect is, the respect is given by those who command it. Uh, we'll just call it that. Mm. Now, um, I see also that it said you was like Emmy nominated. Yeah. How how does that feel? Like to be Emmy nominated, like it's okay. I don't um, I know the weight that it holds. Like I know I know what it does. Emails get open faster. It's a nice title to have. It's something that um, my dad always tells me to celebrate the nominations. He's like celebrate the nominations because even without, even if you don't get the award, it's still a win because there's thousands of people that weren't nominated either. But I'm also a person that likes to see shit through. So it's like, the Emmy nomination is like dope. It's like, hey, I did something at a certain level that most people didn't, but I also didn't bring it home. So that pushes me to do more, you know what I'm saying? And it's not like, I ain't bring it home because I wasn't worthy. It's just, hey, maybe somebody else did better or the committee at that time felt something else was deserving. But um, it's a nice title. It was during that time. I mean, my dad was one of the reasons behind it. It was something that made me embrace it more and something to lean into more because I was never one for I never really been one for like bragging on myself or speaking of myself because um, I know what goes behind the work behind the scenes so sometimes the shit that people find impressive I don't hold to that same air because I know what went into it but then it's also like it doesn't matter I got to start celebrating everything that happens because it happened you know what I'm saying so right. it's a it's a 
double edged sword for real. Right. Yeah. Now when that happened, like when you was nominated, like did you like experience like a change in like a sort of like respect and love that you got from people like did you see like a change in people? Um I think the admiration just I think it added to the admiration, right? It was it was never really it wasn't like a flip of a switch. You know how most people they say, um, oh, I did something and everybody just started acting da da da. It wasn't that for me. It was more of a it was, oh damn, you did something else dope. That's what it was for me. I remember the night, we was in Chicago. I remember the night um of the night. I went down, called my mom, called my dad, and I remember those conversations. So for me that was like the thing. Knowing that they were proud was enough of a night for me. I was like, this is this is fire. And then going on and telling everybody else was, that was just icing on the cake. Cause it was, y'all already know I do dope shit. Y'all already support me. Here's something else dope that we did that wasn't planned or wasn't even on the goal list. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, the change was, it was just to add on to the admiration already. All right, well, yeah. that's dope bro. Congratulations to that. I appreciate you man. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> now my next question is, um, it has something to do with an artist who will also be like, labeled as a backpack rapper and he got a big name for himself in Milwaukee and um it was Webster X like recently it was like a, um a letter going around on social media from his ex-girlfriend mm -hmm. saying how she was like in an abusive relationship with him for five years mm -hmm. like you knowing um I don't know if you really know him personally but you knowing of Webster X and I'm pretty sure you've probably been around him before yeah. like what do you take on that like how did that make you feel when you heard that news? It's disappointing. Uh, it's disappointing because it's, one, nobody should ever have to go through abuse at all. Like, that's not something we want to see on anybody. So, um, you know, sorry to Katie that you had to go through that. Big ups on uh, having the strength to even speak out because a, a lot of uh, men and women, anybody who goes through abuse is, from what we hear, is not the easiest thing to share, you know what I'm saying? Just because of how people usually react and then the situations that happen are usually with somebody that has an influence over other people. Um, it's unfortunate as an artist because, you know, this this is now a reflection of how people already see artists as right. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, there's already a, a stigma that comes with being in the industry. And because of that, it's all right, these is how these people act and this is the shit that happens. But then it's also at the same time, it's like, these are, because this isn't the first time we heard of this happening with a Milwaukee artist. That's the other thing too. So granted, this situation was with um, somebody they were in a relationship with, but then even in other situations where you're with people that are just fans or just strangers, whatever. I don't like the fact that um, people that are cared about are taken advantage of and then hurt in that way. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a touchy subject, bro. It's one that I'm I don't have a lot to say on because it ain't my place. It's just one is wrong. That's what it comes down to. Two, it shouldn't happen. I don't think a man should ever put their hands on any woman unless their life is absolutely in danger. And then three. Uh, I mean, it just, it just goes down to the general statement. I have sisters. I have close women friends. But then I also got a mother. And my mom always told me, if, if the decision you about to do wouldn't make me proud, don't do it. That's, that's just what she's always told us. If you think that what you're about to do wouldn't make me proud, you don't need to do it. And that's just what it comes down to, that's for real. Advice. That's, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> yeah, once don't... again, shout out. My bad, I don't mean to cut you off. No, but, no. you know, again, shout out to Katie for having the courage to speak up. And um, I've been following it, you know, I'm, I'm keeping track of it, of course. And I like the way that she's going about it and handling it and, you know, telling people to approach it, not approach him, but approach the situation with graces. Everybody's trying to figure out a next step because whenever we talk about abuse in any form, we always wonder what's the next step. But um, actions aren't usually Followed after that, you know what I'm saying, or nobody knows what it is. So, uh, seeing what she's doing to make sure that there are active steps and conversations happening, and you know, actions to follow up, is good. And um, that takes a lot of courage, bro. Stronger woman than me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Katie for you know telling that story and you know being a voice for other women and stuff like that. Now, mm 
I just hope that situation, you know, um, I, don't, I don't speak on it too yeah. much because it ain't my place either, but it is sad and I, I mean, it's a it's a reality. It's a reality of the scene. It's something that we're dealing with. Right. And, um, whenever this shit happens, I mean, I know me and mine are moving, right? But it also makes me do that internal check again. Like, you know, let's make, let's make sure we're still doing this. We still treat people with that same respect and consideration because, yeah. once again, nobody should have to go through this. Yeah. Well, you know, I just hope, like, you know, he gets, like, you know, the help he probably need from this mm -hmm. situation and, um, she forgive him, you know, and don't hold that, you know, hate against him. But I can't tell her not to. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just saying for her peace. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I just, with anything, yeah. it's going gonna, gonna to pan out how it pans out. And Facts. then everybody going to live with whatever the decisions are that was made. Yeah, Same way we're living with the choices that are currently, that yeah. led to this. So. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm sorry to hear about that situation, you know. Now, my next question is, uh, what's next for Genesis Rindy? I want the world Chico and everything in it. <laughs> uh, nah, bro. Um, continue growing, man. Um, I feel like I feel like I got my sound down for real. Like with the last releases, all right, we got the sound. We know what works, and now it's just building and growing and expanding on that. Um, the music has been perfected, as they say. So we put the ten thousand plus hours in on that. Now my thing is, let's do the same for. Uh, the business side of everything and make sure that's just as great as the music and just keep pushing my main thing is videos right now being more visual That's been the one thing I haven't had a lot of in my career and I feel like that's handicapped me too So making sure I'm shooting videos for everything um, Create more content because of the era we in social media era. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's not my favorite thing to do But I'm finding ways to like it like once I find something I like I try to run with it And then it's just being consistent bro consistency is one of the hardest things ever um, I think a lot of people mistake Consistency with persistence. I'm very persistent, but I'm not always consistent. So for me, it's like, all right, let's stay consistent and stay disciplined for sure. Right. And then just keep going from there. It's kind of hard with this day and age. Mm -hmm. like, it's all for the moment. Yeah. You know? It's, yeah. It's but it's like, stuff. for me, it's because um, I'm, I'm good with moments. Like, let's make, I try to make everything I do an experience. But it's like, if that's what we're doing, let's make sure everything is an experience. Or let's, do a bunch of shit to figure out what's worthy of being an experience and then blow that bitch up. Go ahead, bro. I'm doing what everybody else doing. Living and learning. Figuring this shit out as it goes. Exactly. Exactly how it goes, man. Now, my final question for you is, um, this is an important question. I just ask everybody who come on the show. Is, um, where, can you, where do you think you see yourself in the next five years? I'm that nigga, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one. In the next five years, I'm, yeah, I'm him. I'm even now, and I tell my team this all the time, like, I feel like this is the closest I've ever been to what I want. And we only going to get closer. So five years from now, it's, I'm doing this shit I was dreaming and writing about a year, two years ago. And now I'm focused on something even bigger and trying to do something even better. I know I'm definitely in a position to where I got this shit on autopilot and I'm able to uh, put the people I want to put in positions that they want to be in and help them get to whatever they got going on next too. Mm -hmm. That's dope, man. Um, I definitely see all that happening for you within Appreciate the next five you. years or who knows, even before five years. Consistency, you know what I'm saying? It's up to God, bro. I'm just following my path and doing the work. You know right, I mean? right. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, you definitely on the right track. Like I said, you definitely be in your own lane. My boy. You, know, you do what you're supposed to do. You stay out there. Uh, I try to do what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I be fucking up. But, yeah. yeah, I was like, all right, I just fucked up. Let's get back on track. Yeah, but that's part of life, though. You know definitely, yeah. So, yeah, you got to give yourself grace. Right. Give yeah. yourself grace. Give yourself credit. But at least you know what you're trying to do. Oh, yeah, for sure. Getting back on it. That's yeah, all that matters. Yeah, for sure. So, um, I definitely uh, wish you, like, you know, good luck on your success and on, you, on your journey. And um, I thank you for sitting down with me, man, having this interview. I appreciate, I appreciate you, bro. You. Uh, it, means, it means a lot that you even asked me, dog. Who am I? <laughs> yeah, 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 You're Genesis Richie, man. You know what I'm saying? You the go. You the go. My dog. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, appreciate you for coming on the show, bro. For sure, man.